to count or not to count? That is the question. In this video tutorial, we will cover the importance of viability dyes and adding them to your flow cytometry panel with FluoroFinder. Being able to distinguish healthy cells from dead or dying cells is key for any assay, but especially so for flow cytometry. You don't want to compromise your experiment by measuring artifacts in your analysis or sorting non-viable cells. Since a morphology gate alone is not sufficient to remove compromised cells, you should be including a viability dye in every experiment. We'll start off the panel design process by adding viability dyes in step two of FluorFinder. As an example, I'll add Calcine AM and DAPI to a basic panel. Have you ever thought about including your viability dye in a dump channel? This is a great tip we've received from scientists using our software application. It's especially useful if you are already planning to exclude cell subsets and want to reduce the complexity of your spectral range. Keep in mind this tip only pertains to viability dyes that stain dead cells as this positive population will be gated out of your analysis. In step three, it's crucial to assign your viability dye to a channel. FluorFinder blocks a channel after a fluorochrome is selected, thereby preventing the selection of additional incompatible dyes. For instance, if you don't choose a product for Calcine AM, FluorFinder will allow you to select FITSI for CD3. Using best practices in panel design, viability dyes are generally selected after choosing your antibodies. As you assign your dyes to their appropriate channels, you can view their excitation and emission curves. When you add the general category viability dyes in step two, as I did, you are able to select from a comprehensive list of viability dyes that work on your cytometer. With the number of viability dyes available, from UV to near infrared, you shouldn't have any difficulty finding one that fits your panel. You may also want to review the technical data sheet to determine if the dye's properties are compatible with your panel and protocol. If you happen to forget to add your viability dye in step two, don't worry. You have the option of adding it by selecting the show viability box here. Before you complete your viability dye selection, there are also a few other things you'll want to consider, such as, do you need a fixable viability dye? Will the dye interfere with your downstream applications? You can check out the pertinent technical data sheets and these references on viability dyes for further information. Thanks for listening.